SPD. Well, I heard you you might have needed to cancel on us to get uh, Kamala Harris on. I was not going to do that. Um, I would have had to. I knew you guys flew from England, and I wasn't going to cancel on you because I. She had an opportunity to come. In. Someone's. You could look at this and you could say, "Oh, you're being a diva," but she had an opportunity to come here when she was in Texas, and I, I literally gave them an open invitation. I said, "Any time." I said, "If she's done at ten o'clock, I'll we'll come back here at ten o'clock." Mm. I go, I'll do it at nine in the morning. I'll do it at ten p.m. I'll do it at midnight. She's up. She wants to, you know, drink a Red Bull, fucking party on. Yeah, but I think this idea that you're being a diva is silly because you're asking her, you're offering her the opportunity to do exactly what the other candidate did, right? Well, she actually reached out when she found out that he was coming on. So their camp reached out to me. So I said, great, I would love to talk to her. Mm. But it was very difficult to tie it down. And a lot of they wanted to travel. And see, the, the thing is, like, you can't, if, if I go somewhere, then there's going to be other people in the room. And they want to control a lot of things, I'm sure, according to the, the Brett Breyer interview on mm. Fox. Like, people were waving them off. That's a distraction. Mm. People mm -hmm. in the room, like, my whole goal with her and with him is just talk. Just sit, have a conversation like a human being. You, you find out things about people. You get a sense of them, at least. A real sense. That was it. I don't give a fuck what we talk about. I really don't. Mm. I just, I just want to talk to you. Who the fuck are you? Do, they, do you think they think that you're... What do y'all think about this? How do you think Kamala Harris would do with a Joe Rogan style interview? And for the people that aren't aware of it, Donald Trump did a three hour interview, I think with Joe Rogan, where they talked about a lot of different things. It wasn't scripted. They just went. And the fact that, and, and even with the side note, Donald Trump, apparently he was late to his rally after doing a three hour interview with Joe Rogan. If that's true, Donald Trump, I, a lot of people saying stuff about his health. I know a lot of young people that do not have like mentally would be just so drained having a three hour conversation that, you know, the entire world is going to see. I think they have a, almost 40 million people that have seen that interview. And that's just on YouTube. I think it's like 37 the last time that I saw it. Think about that. And then he goes and does a rally. So side note but how do y'all feel about kamala harris not doing it or dis or wanting joe rogan to go to where she is only do an hour of course their team is going to be controlling a lot of it do you think that joe rogan should have still taken the interview or that he did the right thing and saying like no once you remove me from this setting and it's only an hour then it's no longer the joe rogan podcast and to be totally honest Kamala Harris probably needs Joe Rogan more than Joe Rogan needs Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris just did an interview with Shannon Sharp. And it, it's been, on for, been out for, I think, like two days now. I think it did like 1.1 million, 1.2 million. Donald Trump and Joe Rogan had like 26 million in the first day, the first 24 hours. So now, of course, Joe Rogan is a bigger platform than Shannon Sharp. But maybe that just goes to prove the point even more that Joe Rogan doesn't need Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris needs Joe Rogan. But it seems that her campaign is just, they're just not very confident in her having these type of conversations that are not super scripted, super controlled, and very long. And even something with the Shannon Sharp interview, something that I noticed with the Shannon Sharp interview, and I have to go back and double check it. She did an interview with Shannon Sharp. And in the interview, they were talking about, yeah, there's 12 days left. There's 12 days left. But I believe the interview came out, was it yesterday or Monday? I think Monday. So it's really seven days away or eight days away, however you're saying it, um, where they have seven days left until election day. So, yeah, it was be seven days, maybe eight, what, however you want to do the math. That means that his team took, what, four days? If I'm being generous, four days, three days to edit? And then put it out there. So you, it just makes you wonder how edited her interviews are. And then when you have an interview style like Joe Rogan, it's not going to be edited. It's not going to be cut up. It's just a long form conversation that a lot of people don't want to have because a lot of things may come up about them or come out about them that they don't necessarily think is good for um, getting voters. So let's keep going with this. You're on his side and they're more wary of you? I don't know. I mean, there's... Uh just because of my appearance, there's always been this assumption that I'm some right-wing MAGA guy, which is 
I was a Bernie supporter. Mm -hmm. You know, I am um, not. I'm a politically homeless person mm -hmm. for sure. You know, I always considered myself a, a left wing person. I never thought I would ever vote right wing. But then the the tides of culture shifted in a very bizarre way. And it just made me, over time, much more aware of what this stuff is really all about. Because what this stuff is really all about is just these natural human behavior patterns and these tribal instincts that we have. And it overpowers all discussions. It overpowers what's good for the collective group. It overpowers everything. It's just people pick a fucking team and then whatever that team says, it, they can do no harm. They will do their best to marginalize the horrible effects of the furthest mm -hmm. extreme version of that, whether it's Antifa or the Proud Boys. They'll minimalize the... It's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. If you look at what's going on with the liberals right now, so progressives are... They want the war in Ukraine to be funded. They want to censor speech online. And they want to give the World Health Organization, which is deeply influenced by big pharma, including the FDA, deeply influenced. The revolving door between the FDA and pharmaceutical drug companies is legendary. Mm. And they want to give them control over what we take and what we don't take. That's crazy. And that doesn't make sense because that's not what the liberals were when I was a kid. Mm. My mm. parents were hippies. You know, we lived, we lived in San Francisco during the Vietnam War. My parents were like straight up hippies. That's how I was raised. And so for me, it was always like the liberals were the ones who wanted education and open mindedness. The liberals who were the ones with the ACLU let the Nazis mm. talk and let them have a rally. They said you can't infringe on people's free speech because if you infringe on the speech of people that you disagree with, you're being a fucking hypocrite. You got the only solution to bad speech is better speech. We the only solution to bad speech is better speech. So he said a lot there. He said a lot there. And I want to catch up on some of these comments. Uh, another brother escaping the plantation. Have a good one. <laughs> I'm running away. Um, so VT wrote, she is highly in intelligent and can handle herself. VT. What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? Her team is running from these type of interviews. There's no way that you can look. And this is what VT, you got to please explain to me. Help me understand why you think that she can handle herself on a three hour podcast with Joe Rogan. But she didn't do it. Have you seen all of her interviews from the first one? With, who was it? Dana Bash. To even, I mean, whenever she gets pushed back, even in a friendly interview with Anderson, she could not handle answering questions. And you think, and that I'm sure was scripted. And now you think she's going to be able to handle an open form conversation with none of her people in the room, just her and Joe Rogan for three hours. I'm just wondering, like, how are we so... How are we so different in, in our perception of Kamala Harris and what she can handle? And I'm not even talking about the intelligence standpoint. I'm not even talking about the intelligence standpoint. When it comes to being sharp and being able to respond and to questions and being able to kind of talk on the fly, I do not think that she has it. But I'm just wondering what you're seeing that makes you think that she does. Stop the Steal is worth watching. All right, Skeeg wrote, Witches verse the warlocks. The Antichrist is coming if we don't pick the right side. Ooh. Who's the right side? <laughs> uh, Rogan is so smart, VT said. Uncle Brother, shout out to Uncle Brother. Yo, good evening. Joe, Joe Rogan played it right. Kamala's been going to all these other friendly platforms. Why couldn't she go to him? Yeah, you want to go talk to Steven Jackson and Matt, Matt Barnes, but you won't go talk to Joe Rogan. They wanted to control him and the room for when she tanked. We all know that. We all know that. When I say right, I mean the best side. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, Skeegy. Skeegums. Um, yes, I do, in my opinion. I, and and we each, we all of us can have different perspectives. It's totally fine. It's totally fine for us to, you know, have different perspectives. What I'm asking you is just, where has she demonstrated for you, for you to have so much more confidence in her than her own team seems to have in her? Because if her own team was confident, you just said that it was a it would be a good idea for her to go on Joe Rogan. She was in Texas. 
So if if you are so confident in her, I'm just wondering, why does it seem as if she and her team aren't as confident in her? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> well, we disagree. All right. Darth Malice said, I don't care if she's a woman or purple. She's just not qualified. That's the issue. She can't do it. Putin would walk all over her. Um, I can't say that I disagree. I can't say that I disagree. All right, let's keep going for a little. We only got like a minute left of this, and then we're going to transition into what ev will become the main video for today. Initially, it was going to be something else, but we're going to talk about that Black Men Summit hosted by D.L. Ugly right after we finish this one. I've always known that, mm -hmm. but when they had the power over social media and these collective groups of people that all had the same ideology, and then that tribal mentality kicks in, and you lose the perspective that you should have as an educated, educated person that recognizes that everyone has to be able to talk and we have to figure out who's right. And you might be wrong. You might be wrong and you might be clinging mm -hmm. to this idea that you're right and you're going to do the whole thing a terrible disservice. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Um... I'm just not seeing what everybody else is seeing. I'm just not seeing what everybody else is seeing. Uh, well, let me say this. I'm just not seeing what VT is seeing. <laughs> That's what I'm not seeing. I just don't see it. Um, but like, like we both agree that, you know, everybody has their different perspectives. Um, so let's get into the main video for today. So this was a tough one for me to watch. I'm going to be honest. This was a tough video for me to watch. It was very uncomfortable. Um, BT decided to have a black men's summit. Ew, ew, it's Dak. Just want to thank you for checking out our video and visiting the OG network. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you give us a like. And if you're looking to join a community of inspired individuals striving for purposeful abundance, subscribe. And if you're feeling real generous, share the video with some friends and family. All right, I'll see y'all soon. Ew.